The following is an Outdoor Channel original production. These vast, temperate plains provide the perfect habitat for a wide variety of big game species. Broad grasslands bordered by dense cover allow these animals to thrive and to mature to outstanding trophy quality. The stage is set for one of the most unique hunting experiences South America has to offer. Now on SCI's Expedition Safari. SCI's Expedition Safari is brought to you by Safari Club International, first for hunters. Host Mike Rogers resumes his big game hunting adventure with TGB Outfitters in Argentina. After several long stalks across these fertile South American lowlands known as the Pampas, Mike has overcome the odds and found success on an old black buck, a trophy fallow deer, and a massive buffalo. Wow. TGB Outfitters' main hunting area is located in the province of La Pampa in central Argentina. One of the main objectives of the hunt was to get a big stack uh, to show uh, one of the big stacks we can hunt down here. Uh, we saw a very big one the first day, but we didn't get a shot at him. Then for the next couple of days, we, we worked really hard. We saw a lot of stacks, good stacks, mature, oh, 16 to 21 points. But they were just not what we were looking for. We were looking for something over 22, 23 points. Big, mature ball. What do you think? We're going to be walking. We're going to be walking yeah, towards the wind. And you're looking for? the tall forest where it should be a little bit calmer and the animals should be grazing. Not so much sand blowing in their face? Exactly. OK. Yeah, because you, you said that, you know, Putting your head down and trying to feed with that sand blowing. Uh, it's annoying for everybody, yeah. even, even animals. Yeah. So they go in where the grass, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. thinking. Yeah. You've, you've done this before, a time or two. <laughs> Alejandro had invited me to Argentina to hunt red deer. It was his number one species and the one thing that he wanted to do with me in Argentina, find a really good red stag. The challenge for me at this time of the year is it's post rut, after they go through their rut. They go into a different mode where they're feeding a lot, trying to build back their energy and their body mass, and in doing that, they're very, very wary. We knew it was gonna be tough, especially this time of the year. When the rut is over, they're not roaring, so it, it makes it very difficult to find them because you, know, you just cannot locate them throughout sound. So you have to actually find them, and they're very spooky. So. We hunted stag for a couple of days, although we were also hunting other species. We saw a very good number of stags. We saw very nice balls, but not exactly what we were looking for. No, no grandes. No, no grande. It's the story of these stag. We keep seeing huge stags, but not quite what he's got, not quite what we're looking for. We're looking for something that has in the 20, 22, maybe even 24 points total, 12 each side. We're seeing a lot of 12s, a lot of 16s, sometimes even 20, but not quite there, not mature enough. He's gonna hang in there and keep looking. Eluded by the trophy quality stag this area is known to produce, Mike pushes on, embarking on a challenging pursuit for a mature axis buck. Coming up on SCI's Expedition Safari. SCI's Expedition Safari is brought to you by Safari Club International, first for hunters, and by Aimpoint, the future in sight. Wait. Mike Rogers is in central Argentina on a big game hunting adventure with Alejandro Trigo of TGB Outfitters. After a couple of long, hard days stalking deep into the dense brush, Mike's post-rut pursuit for a trophy stag has not yet produced what he's looking for. So Mike and his guides begin a new day in search of an elusive axis buck. 
extremely nervous and quick to startle at the slightest provocation. Axe deer hunting with us is difficult. It's not an easy hunt. Uh, they're very spooky animals. We have very big bucks, but I would say that the week we had with Mike was extraordinary because we saw a lot of bucks. Usually we don't see that many bucks. It's not because they're not there, it's because they're extremely spooky. In Argentina, at this particular area, and with Alejandro, he has uh, herds of really good quality Axis bucks. In fact, it's not uncommon to find some that'll score at the very top of the record book. That's what we're looking for. And when Alejandro and I finally started seeing some of these really good Axis deer, we got excited because to hunt an Axis buck successfully there, you have to do everything right. Our hunting area is very thick. It's, it's all uh, brush area, forest area. We usually spot the animals and, and we don't see them as a whole. We just see parts and pieces of them, either a head, the tail. You can find a set of horns. You can find something that tells you there's an animal there. Then we try to take our time to identify if that trophy is what we're looking for. And, you know, that takes a lot of glassing and sometimes a lot of patience. As Alejandro and I walked through some of the thick cover, we finally came across a couple of really nice bucks. And we looked, yet they were in such thick cover and at such a distance that it was difficult to really look at both of them simultaneously. He started to tell me it's the one on the right, but when you can only see one, are you looking at the one on the right? Or is it the one on the left? You don't know. I rushed the shot just a little bit, enough so that the shot hit its mark, but it hit just a little far back and just a little bit high, and that buck spun and turned and bolted out of there. So fortunately, as we ran forward, we caught up to him. He was so surprised to see us in a different position that he looked at us and gave me that second shot. And fortunately, with guidance from Alejandro, I was able to see a lot of different Axis bucks and really take a nice one. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, Very good. That's a good one. Oh. <sighs> Whoa. We're also running. That's exciting. Oh. Nothing like squeezing with the safety on, huh? <laughs> I thought I had him. But this one did it. Nice. Nice. Gracias. Look at this guy. That's a nice one, huh? Beautiful. Did we do well? Very good. I am so surprised we saw him. What did you see in the brush? Because I was looking for a body and all you saw was antlers. Is that what you picked up? Yeah, we saw the antlers and well, very long and, and wide and long time. So it's a very nice axis. What is it you like about this axis? I mean, he looks to me like an old mature axis, yeah, about as good a, as we've seen. Yeah, he's a mature axis. He's got good length in the main beams. He's got nice tines and he's wide. They're long fronts. Yeah, he's, he's got good. Yeah. He's got good mass. Pups too. and cuddles and, and, and good mass. Yeah, so we've got about as good an axis deer as you get here. I'm, I'm sure there's sometimes you, you get monsters. Would this be considered? Yeah, but this is a very good, this is a very good gold medal. So it's a very good axis. Excellent. Hey, we did well. This is the kind of deer, one of the species you usually include in your donations to Safari Club. Isn't yeah, it? that's correct. 
you know, you've been managing these obviously very well because we've seen a lot of them, a lot of mature ones. I want to thank you for what you do for wildlife conservation management and for Safari Club. Thank you. And thank of course, for me today, thank you. It's <laughs> thank been a great, much. challenging hunt. Really, My really pleasure. enjoyed it. The pleasure's all mine. Coming up, Mike extends his South American big game hunting expedition in pursuit of a majestic mouflon ram next on SCI's Expedition Safari. Thought to be one of two original ancestors for all modern day sheep, mouflon have certainly stood the test of time. Here in central Argentina, a group of mature rams have also tested Mike's patience, slipping out of sight into the shelter of thick cover. Mouflon hunting can sometimes not be that difficult. Well, with these mouflon rams in Argentina, it is anything but easy. It was extremely difficult just to get to them. We had seen three particular mouflon in the same general area for a couple of days. We tried to get on them more than once, and every single time we tried to get on them, they either winded us or saw us, or we just bumped them and we could never get a clean shot at them. We could never get them. So finally, one morning we're going hunting and we see mouflon in this same general area. They, they're walking in the brush, so we, we decide to take another chance and go and go try and go after them. So we go into the brush, we start looking for them, and we couldn't find them at all. They were gone, vanished. actually turn around and make a couple of steps and then I saw them and they were right there behind a the brush feeding. We were fortunate enough we could set the sticks and we had a, a window for Mike to shoot. Although one of the mouflons saw us at the last minute, Mike was able to take the shot. One on the left. There we go. Whoa. Those things are, <laughs> how did they disappear like that? I thought they were. Good eye. We finally got to them. I took a shot. It wasn't particularly a long shot, but it's a small animal. And the small animal in that thick, heavy, big, dense cover is what made it so challenging. There we go. He is done. He's better yeah. than I thought he was. Yeah. Wow. Look at this guy. Now that is a classic yeah, nice mouflon ram, huh? In the saddle, this, what would you say in terms of, uh, in terms of horns and, and what you get here? Cause this looks pretty good oh, to he's me. Very nice. He's got, yeah, he's got a good base, good length. Yeah, I, I mean, like the that typical he, beer, the white saddle. That's right. Perfect. No, he's and he's he's getting that that winter cape going, isn't he? Yeah. He's losing some of the little inside, uh, you know, sheep fur. But he's he's got a great cape. I love the hunt. The hunt for him was great because yeah. how many times do I see him? Six times, and yeah. every time never could get him. Oh, I mean, this guy would go into the bush walking, and we would come in on an intercepting type of path and he'd be gone. Yeah. It was like he walked in and then just took off or walked in and disappeared. This time, he was gonna do the same thing, but somehow you saw him there feeding. I mean, it just is amazing how easily animals can hide in this oh, yeah, habitat. Oh because they were not 20 yards away, 30 right. when we saw them. And we almost walked right by him. Yeah. I've hunted mouflon quite a bit, and I gotta say, it's one of my favorite sheep species to hunt, as you know, other than the, the big four yeah. that you get in North America, these are, Really oh, beautiful sheep. Beautiful sheep. And this guy is that that's a that's a good trophy. Yeah. And I gotta say thank you very much for for this, for you know, all the species that we've been so lucky to see. You know, Axis, tough to get here. Uh, you know, we're still looking for that stag. We'll 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 get across him someday, I know it, but Mouflon, 
fallow that was amazing. This has just a, been an amazing hunt, and to get a great sheep like this, it's kind of a, a surprise. I did not expect to have a Mupon ram coming home. This is this is fantastic. Thank you great. so much for everything you do. You're most welcome. Really appreciate it. Juan, gracias, senor. <laughs> After a great shot on a mature Mouflon ram, Mike Rogers pulls out all the stops on his final attempt for a trophy stag. But will the thick brush here in central Argentina stand in the way of his last hope for success? Find out next on SCI's Expedition Safari. SCI's Expedition Safari is brought to you by Safari Club International, first for hunters, and by Aimpoint, the future in sight. There we go. And I gotta say thank you very much. After an amazing hunt for a wide variety of big game species here at TGB Outfitters in Argentina, the trophy stag this area is known for continues to elude Mike and his guides. With time running out, they hunt long and hard into the vast landscape, dedicated to the pursuit of a mature post-rut bull. We made a decision to stay out all day and focus this entire last day of hunting on getting that red deer. We've tried everything and we've seen a lot of really good red deer, but we haven't seen the one we're looking for. And about halfway through the day, we did finally get on a really good red deer. That's it, that's the stack, that's the stack. I know that's the one we've been looking for. As you get closer, you realize this is a really good red deer. And I noticed there was something unusual about him. And I couldn't figure out what it was because I never really got that great look. He has no idea where he is. You see him? I don't see him, do you? He was oh. heading towards our left, so what we did is we started walking towards the left to find an opening where Mike could shoot if he presented himself out of that thick brush. Oh, oh yeah, 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 I see him. Ah, he's in the thickest stuff. I can't see him in there. As you look at the heavy cover all around you and you see an animal working through, you see lanes. Like if he comes through here, I can shoot him there, I can shoot him here, but any past here, I'm not gonna be able to get him. He's working to the left and there's no shooting lane. There's just no chance. We need to move forward. I can't see him in there. Hit. That was a good shot. Ah, he's that gone. was a good <laughs> shot. Yep. Perfect. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. Good shot. I knew that shot was good. I felt so confident when it went off. I just went, yes, that's the spot. <laughs> Thank you. Good. He's down. He's down. Uh, I would like to see somebody tell me that red deer hunting here with you is easy. It's anything but easy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Tell me that's a unique mount. Oh, Look yeah. at the antler growing out of the middle of his forehead. Oh, he's got a fighting one, though. And he is a sick boy. He needed to get killed. Look at that. He wasn't going to make it much longer. Look at that. Whoa. Look at this thing. Yeah. Grows out of the middle of his head. 
and it looked like he was fighting and like he got, uh, he got a wound there. messed up. He was gonna be sick sick real soon. That is really good we shot him, huh? You counting points? What do we got? Let's just lean him up here like this. 24. 24 points. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's it. Oh, one, 24. 24. Ah, look at that. And, and, mira, look at this. A fracture when he was young. Do you think a fracture when he was young yeah, caused cause, that? Yeah, because otherwise this wouldn't be, you know. It wouldn't be off center, like it fractured his <laughs> skull or something. Uh, that's a bad growth there. You. You want to take a stag like this out of your herd, especially... He's pretty unique. Let me he's tell you. very <laughs> unique, and especially because he's wounded. But he's a beautiful stag, 24 points. Got long fronts. Look at the fronts on him. One, two, three. Look at the thirds. You don't normally see thirds that long on a stag. And that third oh, has junk with it. And then he's got the tops. You know, he's got the oh, nice crown. Man, oh man, we've hunted some really neat animals together. Axis and great fallow, black buck. But we've hunted red deer for the most part the entire time I've been here. Oh yeah. And here it is, almost the end of the hunt, and we finally get a red deer, and it's a beauty. It's a, just a monster with real character, 24 points. This was a hunt I will never forget, and I really ended up with something that I wanted. To get what you want, support our sponsors, especially Safari Club International, the organization that's first for hunters. Log on to www.safariclub.org and join the organization that's protecting our freedom to hunt. For Outdoor Channel, Expedition Safari, and Safari Club International, I'm Mike Rogers. We'll see you next time on America's leader in outdoor TV, Outdoor Channel.